What is the difference between forecasting and prediction? Quite often, we interchangeably use these terms. While both of them are about predicting the future, in that sense, I can even say that forecasting is nothing but a subset of prediction. Some of the common forecasts that we see regularly relate to weather, it relates to economic parameters such as GDP, price index, population, and sometimes of late pollution forecasts. There are a lot of fundamental similarities and differences between both of them, that is forecasting and prediction, and that's what we're going to check out in the next few minutes. Both of them use statistical modeling to predict the future. We build a model with a target variable, that's the outcome that we want to predict or forecast as a function of several input variables. This is commonly represented as y is a function of x. But in the case of forecasting, we have the target variable as only a function of time. Such a model is called as a temporal model because we only use time to predict the value of y, whatever that be, whether it is GDP, whether it's sales or whether it is something about pollution. But with prediction, we use other predictors or other indicators which are external to that particular factor. And that's why these models are called as exogenous models. Now let's check out a small example. Let's say I want to forecast the sales. And if I'm going to forecast the sale of next month using the data of sales of all the previous months, then such a model is called as forecasting. But with prediction, if I want to predict the sales, let's say for the next quarter, next month, whatever that be, if I'm going to use predictors such as the availability of product in the market, the amount of promotion, the budgets that we spend on promotion, price offers that we are giving. And if we know that these three factors, for example, historically impact the sales, then if we create a mathematical model, then such a model can be used for prediction. And we call that as a predictive model and not a forecasting model. We are going to take an example and talk about this in greater detail in the subsequent videos. But I want to mention that as far as forecasting is concerned, getting the data right is very important. For example, if you want to forecast the weather for the next five minutes, I don't need last 10 years data. I would rather need the data of let's say last 24 hours or so. So depending on what is important and the time horizon on which you want to forecast, uh, you may need relevant data. And moreover, forecasts are used as near-term view. So sometimes you would see that forecast, especially for weather, for the next hour, next few hours, or let's say for the next uh, 24 hours, next week, and so on and so forth. So depending on how much data you have and how much you want to forecast, the accuracy will also vary. Now, forecasts by default are impacted by, for example, trend in the data. They're impacted by seasonal or cyclical patterns that you find in the data. There can also be structural shifts. You know, all of a sudden, you know, the data shifts from one range to another range. Or it could also be impacted by random movements, right? Data going all over the place. So there are various statistical models, both basic and advanced for forecasting. For example, using moving averages, that is simple moving averages, exponential moving averages, using smoothing techniques, even a method called as Holtwinter's method are all very popular methods used for forecasting. There are several advanced methods that you see on the screen. Now enough of all this, what we're going to do now in the next video is take an example and use the forecasting functions which are available in Excel to build simple forecasting models. So see you in the next.